St. Davis, nice to have you today. You may be seated. Uh, first of all, congratulations for setting your clocks forward. Uh, that's uh, uh, a reminder to be kind to those who will be coming in at 10 to 12. I'm serious about that. Be kind. Lots of things going on in, in the bulletin. Um, and a few announcements that didn't make it into the bulletin. One announcement is the memorial service, the fourth memorial service for the Cougar 491 uh, tragedy is on a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock with 6.30 pre-music at the Salvation Army, the Citadel on Adams Avenue. So uh, that's Tuesday night, uh, four years since that incident. Uh, I'll be taking part and many others as well. Uh, just a thank you to all who came out to the annual meeting last uh, last week. We very much appreciate your time and effort to uh, review and to uh, plan for our coming year here as a church. Thank you as well for the 4% increase. I very much appreciate it personally. Uh, thank you uh, to the congregation. Um, you'll note that there is a financial message in, in the bulletin, in the insert. And uh, we have, uh, uh, again, tried to do a little bit more, and uh, so we ask you to think about your offerings in line with that. Uh, the good news is that the first eight weeks uh, were up significantly from the, la the first eight weeks of last year. So thank you already for, those your, for your generosity. Uh, we'll need a little more generosity this year, and uh, there will be more and more announcements in that way. But thank you very much for all that you're doing. Also, there is a Teze inspired service on Friday, this Friday, March the 15th from 7.30 to 8 here uh, in the church. And um, what is that service, you ask? Well, it's, um, it's a quieter, more reflective style of uh, worship and uh, it has been very popular in France uh, amongst thousands of youth. But it's also a time uh, in Lent to come and to enjoy the Lord in a special way. So that uh, Amy's leading that service, so um, we welcome you back here on Friday. Holy Week services are coming sooner than, uh, than we think. It's actually um, in two weeks' time is Palm Sunday, which taken me by surprise, so maybe a little bit more than you, but uh, that's in two weeks' time, and all that week we have services here, uh, which are the combined churches of St. Andrews and St. David's, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, I think it's at 7, again, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure right this minute, and then a communion service on the Thursday night, and a Good Friday service uh, on Friday morning, uh, that's at 11. So um, that's all Holy Week, something every day, uh, something to mark your calendar here as it's coming closer and closer. Well, that's lots of announcements, and I haven't even gotten to half of the ones that are printed there, so we do encourage you to read the printed announcements. Like Alexandra speaking, my daughter on Tuesday at AMS, but there we are. Okay. Let's begin to worship the Lord, and as we do, um, we are uh, encouraging you to hear the words of number 17 in the hymnal. Number 17 is, How Blessed Are They Whose Sins Are Forgiven, an encouragement to all of us as we reconnect with God on this, the Lord's Day.
purple insert, if you take that out right now, that would be great. She will be the leader and we will be the all. The fourth Sunday in Lent, things change along the way. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. While the Israelites were in Gilgal, they kept the Passover. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Our disgrace has been rolled away. Happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let all who are faithful offer prayer to God. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust God. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Our transgressions are forgiven. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. We are ambassadors for Christ since God is making an appeal through us. We are a new creation. There was a man who had two sons. While the son who had gone away was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We are sinners who repent. We are one week closer to the end and the beginning. We have wandered, we have wasted, but we are repenting. Lord of Lent, we trust and hope that you are still creating us. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 202, We Lay Our Broken World at Your Feet, Lord, 202.
before the Lord. It's a time for each of us to safely bring before God those parts of our lives which keep us in bondage, those parts of our lives which hurt us and others, those parts of our lives which we hold out against God. And so we have a time of approaching God, remembering who God is, confessing our sins quietly, and then the assurance of forgiveness and pardon, followed by the Lord's Prayer. So with this in mind, we use the words also in the Lord's Prayer of debts and debtors. And this in mind, let us pray. And Lord, we do lay our broken world at your feet. You see all. We wonder at the size of our universe and you as the creator, the millions of light years of space, the galaxies, the constellations, the solar systems, our own place and planet, one amongst billions and we give you praise. You are the one who knows all this. And you know us, each one, across every time zone, every continent. This day that we give over to you, so many are speaking with you on this day. We give you thanks that we can come and have the freedom, the strength and health, the choice to be here today. Lord, we have much to say to you and very little time to say it in. Yet we bring one or two things to confess. Areas of our lives that we have held back from you. Our thoughts. Our life decisions. Our work decisions. Our studying choices. Lord, we bring them back to you now and confess our sins to you. Any attitudes or actions or inactions against your will and way, we confess them quietly to the Lord.
can't get over it. So low, can't get around. Well, boys and girls, um, we have a song for you here, 519 Jesus, Friend So Kind and Gentle. It's also a baptismal song, because we're going to have a baptism today, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. And, and uh, so we're going to sing 519, and then you're going to come forward to the steps. us into new life. 
of growth and service. In the sacrament of baptism, we, the church recognizes God's covenant of grace. We receive God's gift with reverent joy and respond in faith and obedience. Remember the words of Peter on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Obeying the command of Jesus Christ and believing in his promises, the church baptizes those whom the Lord our God calls. Because God acts for us in baptism as God has acted for our salvation from the beginning of time. As we stand before the waters of baptism, we hear again the words spoken to the Israelites. All you need to do is to stand and watch what God does, the waters of the sea. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you this day. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. The Lord commanded Moses, tell the people of Israel to go forward. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Through the waters of baptism, we go forward with Christ from death to new life. We move on a firm foundation of dry ground that is none other than the faithfulness of God, whose loving mercy endures forever. So let us take courage. Promises of God are for us and for our children. Let us move forward through the waters, trusting in the faithfulness of God, secure in the love made known in Jesus Christ, confident that the Holy Spirit is acting now to free us from sin and death, lead us in a new life of love and service in union with Jesus Christ, in whom we have become heirs of the covenant. So if the family would come forward now, and uh, and the elder would come forward as well. And Sylvia for later. That's great. That's that's great. Just right there is good. And uh, maybe Aubrey would, uh, on behalf of session, offer these words. Who comes to receive the gift of baptism? On behalf of the major session, I'd like to present Owen Benoit and Diane Mercer, who are living their child for Christian baptism today. And I guess question then to Owen and Hannah is, do you desire that Hannah Marie be baptized at this time? If so, please say, I do. And then some other questions. And by the way, you should have in your, in your service uh, a, an insert so that you can follow along because you'll have a part as well very soon. So please follow along with me. That'd be great. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, who has been faithful to us in all generations, do you turn away from sin? Renounce all evil powers in the world which rebel against God or oppose God's rule of justice and love? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin which separate you from the love of God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. Do you desire independence on the Holy Spirit to mature as a Christian in the church? To seek the guidance of Christ as you listen to his word? celebrate his death and life at the table he provides and to engage in his mission to the world if so say I do and do you promise to raise Hannah in the love and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ within the home and the fellowship of the church if so please say I do okay and now here's the congregational part if you'd like to stand please that'd be very good and this is for all those who consider them a part consider themselves a part of the the Christian church, wherever it is, whether you're visiting today or whether you're here, do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Hannah Marie by word and deed, with love and in prayer, encouraging her to follow the way of Christ and to be a faithful member of the church? If so, say, we do. And then together, as we continue to stand, we will say the Apostles' Creed in this question and answer style do you believe in God the Father Almighty I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth do you believe in Jesus Christ I believe in Jesus Christ God's only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died and was buried He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O gracious God, for the gift of your Spirit, the sign of this water. For in the beginning, when your Spirit moved over the waters, you gave order and life to your planet Earth. By the waters of the flood, you cleansed the world and established with Noah and his family a new beginning for all people. In the time of Moses, you led your people out of slavery through the waters of the sea, making covenant with them in a new land. In the, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was formed in the water of a woman's womb. The water of Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed by your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, by the gift of water and your Holy Spirit, you sustain all life. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the sign of this water, you cleanse from sin those who receive this sacrament. You raise them to new life through his resurrection and graft them into the body of your church. Pour out your Spirit upon this your child, that she may have power to do your will and continue forever as a servant of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Now the fun part. Here we go. Here we are. I got her. I got her. I won't drop you, will I? Will I drop you? No, I won't drop you. There we go. I'm just going to get you in this, what I call a football position. There we go. Doing okay? Hannah Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. In case that blessing wasn't enough, we're all going to bless her uh, using the words of number 619. And I'm going to take a walk with her, if that's okay. And uh, she's doing pretty well. And, uh, and uh, that's the ironic... Re- Did I get the number right, Gordon? Thank you. God bless you. So you start us out. We're ready to go. should be available for all persons. I'm honored today to present Anna Marie with this Bible storybook. And may God bless your family as you continue your spiritual journey. Give it to God. And Aubrey or the elders going to give you the certificate of baptism. Thanks, guys. And uh, we have a quilting group here who does quilts. And there's a little baby quilt for you. So, so that uh, we call it fabric ministry. We just, uh, as you wrap her up, remember the, the love of, the, of God and church goes with you. So all the best to you both. You may, the congregation may be seated at this time. Thanks for standing. Boys and girls, let's have a prayer together, shall we? And everybody can say the prayer after me. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and talk with God. Dear God, Thank you for Hannah. Bless her. Keep her close to you. Now and always. Help us, Lord, to love each other 
and to love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Joshua 5, verses uh, 9 to 12, appearing on page 320 of the, um, of the Pew Bible. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land on leavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate of the produce of Canaan. Turning now to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 to 21, on page 1722. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 32, which is found on page 829 in your pew Bible. We will read responsibly from that psalm. Psalm 32, and the whole psalm we'll be reading responsibly. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by a bit 
and bridle, or they will not come to you. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Amen. And thanks be to God for this is holy word. And turning then to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. We have the famous parable of the lost son. Luke 1 to 3, 11 to 32. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Verse 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. And not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? Here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look... All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word. Let us pray. And Lord, help us as we seek to honor you with understanding this, your word, for our own lives. Help us as we seek to receive your fatherly love, grace, and mercy. To receive from you that which we cannot give to ourselves through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a hymn which is not really like a hymn, but it's a Teze song. And it's 206, so if you turn there. 206. It's called Jesus Remember Me. Now, you remember where Jesus Remember Me is from, right? Those are the words from the robber on the cross saying... When you come into your kingdom, remember me. It's, he's not saying to Jesus that he has a memory problem. You, you know that, right? So I just need to remind you of the context. Uh, Jesus, remember me, is really, it, it's really the cry of the heart of another man on the cross next to Jesus saying, I want to be in your life. Would you be in mine? So that's really what we reflect on as we sing this. Now this is probably one of the simplest songs in the book. 
and Tezde tends to be simple and reflective. So we will sing this three times, it's very short, but now you know what I want you to do while we're singing, okay? Besides singing, if you would like. 206, we stand to sing. what we translate as manna 
thin cakes of unleavened bread, slightly sweetened. We'd probably call them crackers today, which came for 40 years as they made choices against God to enter the land. Now, even as they were choosing against God, God's provision for them nevertheless continued. And then they finally entered the promised land. This new generation had a chance to make a difference and not be as rebellious as the old one. They had their first meal celebrating the Passover in the promised land with food harvested from their new home. And when that new food was enjoyed, the old manna, the miraculous bread from heaven, stopped. God knew their need. They now could feed themselves from the crops, but they still needed God to oversee the fact that crops could even be grown. And just as we need God today to allow the crops to grow and to have reasonable weather to sustain our food needs. And so God's provision continues to today. We badly need God for our spiritual lives and God's grace. We also badly need to share with many parts of the world that have so much less than we do. And so we give in part through Presbyterian World Service and Development and other development agencies. We do so in part through caring to know and caring to give. Sometimes we don't think we need God. Those times are mentioned in Psalm 32. The psalmist says that he withers away inside when he tried to hide his sin, when he tried to pretend that he didn't need God. Sometimes we do the same. Pretending we are in charge, pretending we are in control of our lives and others' lives, and it causes us to waste away inside. It causes us to wither spiritually because we cannot manage our own lives the way we think we can. And God allows us challenges and crises and catastrophes. It allows them as wake-up calls to remind us of our need. We then can turn to God and God can make a full reconciliation with us. Now that word reconciliation is usually used today in the context of separation and divorce. It's a restoring of something that was broken. Our relationship with God is broken as we choose rebellion, as we choose to sin, but it is restored in Jesus Christ. It is this reconciliation with God that we are offered personally, and then we are offered a position of becoming ambassadors of reconciliation for His Royal Highness, the Most High God. This privileged position comes to each one of us who calls ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. And we have no higher calling as we receive the good news of being reunited with the living God, we are urged to pass on that good news with anyone who will receive it. And there is the challenge and the opportunity for you and for me. It's not just a clergy calling, but for everyone who believes to pass on what they have received. That is reconciliation to the author of life. Now how will we know, you ask, how will we know who wants to receive this good news of a loving friend and powerful Master Jesus? And so to this point of knowing who will receive the good news, Jesus himself told a story. And that story is about a man who has two sons. And you know that story. And one son decides it's time to leave home and party with the best and the worst, so he does. The other son stays home, and although he is not that happy at home, he dutifully does what he is told. The first son runs out of money, his father gave him, and came to his senses in less than a minimum wage job, and he is starving. He decides... It's time to reconcile with his father now that he's hit the bottom in his life. The other son, the older one, knows that he deserves more than what he is getting and despises his younger brother coming home. In his anger and bitterness, he tells his father off. Now you ask yourself, which of these two sons is ready to accept the good news? And the story tells us that it is the one who knows he is needy. And this is a warning to us. If you don't know you need God, you may not be ready for any message that he loves you, that he wants your best. You probably won't see his hand working in your life. We know that the father's message of everything he had belonging to the older son went loud and clear to the older son from the father. But the older son was so angry and bitter, he couldn't hear it. But this does not make the father's open message and open arms any less than what it is. The father pursues us loves us, looks for us, longs for our best. Father's generosity is there for us, even when we are planning to go to the far country to squander it. Or perhaps we're already there. That's how generous the Father is toward each one of us. So we need to know our need. We need to love others in need. We need to love those who are angry and bitter. But we also might recognize that they might not be ready to accept the good news. 
Nevertheless, we love them and encourage them to go for the good news. Because frankly, we don't know who is the older brother and who is the younger brother among us. All we can do is recognize in ourselves our tendencies towards rebellion and addiction or or towards entitlement and bitterly doing good, neither out of love nor secure relationship. We tend to be like that older son or like that younger son. But whenever we are found, whether in our neediness or in our anger and bitterness, there God throws a party. The lost is found, the homeless finds a home again. The troubled heart is soothed and at peace. And this is true both for the younger and the older son. We often don't know what to say to ourselves, let alone to others. Most times what we mostly need to do is listen. Then where we have found bread as beggars, we point the way to where that bread may be found. And we point to Jesus. So I hope you do this honestly and openly. We live in an age that no longer smiles upon such encounters. Yet as followers of Christ, we care enough to do what that caring father does in the parable. May we be such people. Let us pray. And Lord, you know us inside and out. You know what we're like in this season of Lent and throughout the year. You pursue us. You draw us back to yourself. Give us the attention, the desire, the passion to know you anew. To love you for our own sake and the sake of those around us. For those who are brand new in this life and for those who perceive themselves as being at the end of their lives. Lord, give us step by step and moment by moment the knowledge, experience of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before the offering, Penny's coming up to give a minute for mission. Welcome to Penelope. Good morning. I would like to tell you about three opportunities to be involved with mission locally. Um, This Wednesday, no, not this Wednesday, next Wednesday, March the 20th, the AMS groups from St. David's and St. Andrew's will join forces to help feed the poor in downtown St. John's. The people who are fed are at-risk youth, street people, the working poor and people with mental dis- um, health issues. And as you know, this could be any of us at any given time. A lunch is prepared every Wednesday at Gower Street Church, usually to about 60 to 100 people. So if you would like to help shop, prepare, serve, or clean up, or chat to clients, please talk to um, Lillian Crawford or Sheena Findlay there, or myself, say after church. And secondly, this lunch program needs community groups, individuals or businesses to make a firm commitment to providing one or more Wednesday lunches during the year. Maybe as little as five to ten people are needed per week. And the menu is really up to you, ranging from soup and sandwiches, and I think that's what's on the menu on March the 20th. There's homemade soup and turkey sandwiches. Um, It could be mousse stew, homemade beans and ham, salad and lasagna, mac and cheese, with costs ranging from about $100 to maybe $240. So if you think of groups maybe that you're involved with, uh, either at work or your book club or people you go for coffee with or the gym, there's all kinds of possibilities. We have um, this working man's hat. It's a little child's hat, a Tonka hat. And we usually use this to gather funds for a mission just like this. So it will be available out in the narthex after church today and also perhaps down at the coffee hour. And we might just bring bring this out every few Sundays. So if you feel you might like to contribute, that would be just wonderful. The third opportunity... Oopsie. Hat down now lies in Taiwan. Not literally, um, 
But we are fortunate to have had one of our own, Alexandra Dent, from, and she's really involved with the College and Careers Group, and she's um, serving. She wants to tell us about her um, experience about serving and learning about the church in Taiwan. And we have an opportunity to hear this, and she's bursting to tell us about it. It's going to be on Tuesday evening at 7.30, so we would welcome everyone to come. This promises to be a must-see and learn event. All three opportunities allow us to experience mission in action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Penny. We're going to have our offering now. If the ushers would come forward, we give our tithes, offerings, and gifts to the Lord. And instead of our regular doxology, we're going to do another teze. So if you want to turn in your hymnals to 446, you'll be ready for that, 446.
today we continue to pray for those who need healing, for those who need God, for those who need uh, God's inter- intervention and creative intercession. And so, with this in mind, let us pray. Lord, you know us and you know how we got here this day. You know our anxious thoughts and our day to day thinking. We are grateful for the opportunity to be with this people at this time, that we have enough health, enough strength, enough political choice and freedom to be here in this place at this time. Thank you. Be with those around us, those in our families, those who are our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, those that we go to school with. You've placed these in our lives for a reason. Use us, we pray. As you meet us with your love, show that same love to these. And Lord, you know those who you've placed on our hearts and minds. We ask for your healing hand. Continue on David Artis. And others, Lord, for those who are facing surgery of various kinds, for those who are lonely and at home and unable to come to service. And Lord, whoever you bring to our hearts and minds now, we bring them before you in the quiet.
reminder that down this hallway is a coffee hour with some goodies too, I think. And uh, you're all welcome to stay for, for that. We hope you can. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen.